sure you write over there. So. All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>
Hello, Maya, and welcome to the funeral services for Princess Abigail Kinamiki Kikaluki Konunoko. I also want to acknowledge the presence of His Majesty, Kinituhie Kutia, and his wife, Makao Ariki Atafari. We have journeyed here from Aotearoa to pay respect to his great friend, Princess Abigail. The king offered his personal protocol to her yesterday afternoon as she lay in state in the throne room at the Olani Palace. That said, he specifically requested that no protocol or ceremony mark his presence today, as this day should be about his friend Abigail and no one else. We humbly thank him for the honor of his presence here today. Uh -huh. We will begin today's service by calling upon Kau Cordell Kiko, who is often called upon for spiritual matters here in Manala, to offer the opening prayer and also to lead us in singing the doxology. Kau. We do come for that time of a celebration today. I'm going to ask all who are able, if you would stand with me, please. Mahalo iloko o Yesu Kristo e mawana ikalana kila. Ailoko o kako e laha ai kona aala. We are thankful to you, O Lord, who in Christ always leads us in triumph and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of God, of Aloha, everywhere. So today in this, as we celebrate the funeral of the Royal Highness Princess Abigail Kinoiki Kekaulike Kawananakoa, we ask your Aloha Spirit to fill this place with all of your Aloha, and so we pull this blessing with much aloha. Amen. Amen. If you know the Kamele Ho'omai Ka'i, the doxology, will you sing it with me, please? King Kamehameha was living on the Big Island in the Kona area. He was well aware that his time on earth was coming to a close, and a great concern to him was what would happen to his remains once he passed. The great worry was that someone would take his bones to carve them for use in weapons, fish hooks, and other implements, and in doing so, take his mana, his spirit, for their own purposes. So the identity of who would be responsible for his remains was of critical importance. One night, deep in his darkest hour, all of the king's retainers were summoned to attend him immediately. Some time later, he looked up at all of them, all gathered before him in their capes and finery and with their own retainers about them, except for two men who were essentially naked, clad only in their sleeping malo. He looked around the room and then turned to the two of them and said, You two will be responsible for my bones. When you received my summons, you gave not a thought to how you looked or who accompanied you. You know I called, and so you ran naked to serve me. I know then that loyalty means that there is nothing that can ever make you share with anyone else the place you lay me. These two men, Olu and Hoopili, carried out that kuleana, exactly as he foresaw. And to this day, this very day, we do not know where the remains of our nations found their lives. 
The Mayoho family, descendants of Ho'olulu, stand as co-guardians of Mount Ala, carrying on a legacy that is now over two centuries old. The, the current Kahu, William Bishop Kaihe'ekai, Mayoho will speak to our presence here today. Kau. Aloha. <clears throat> First of all, I want to welcome you to Mount Ala. I'm William Bishop Kaiheikai Maioho, and I'm the 17th Kahu here at Mount Ala to have this Kuleana <clears throat> to guard the Ivy of the Ali'i. And <clears throat> Princess Abigail, by birthright, has the right to be here. And it will be an honor to continue to guard and to protect her Ivy. Thank you. Manuai Kohana Boyd, Native Hawaiian cultural practitioner, Kumahula, an accomplished artist and musician, will chant the lineage of the Kohana Nakoa family. Princess Abigail would often call upon him for this chant, particularly during the events where her lineage was important. One such occasion was yesterday as her casket arrived at the Iolani Palace, where he offered her this chant as a gift to her. And now he once again, and perhaps for one last time directly to her, offer her this chant. Oh, 
One of the favorite gifts that the princess ever received was the gift of the following name song composed for her by Kimo Alamakeowana. And it would always hit her spirits, lift her spirits when she heard him sing it. Kimo is an educator, he's an accomplished musician, singer and composer, and he is a wealth of knowledge on Hawaiian culture. And someone that the princess relied upon greatly. Kimo performs as part of the group they call Lehulu. And besides Kimu, the other members of the group are Frank Damas on bass and Kami Hanakelo on rhythm guitar. Kimu. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Oh, okay, well, wish I could applaud. <laughs> Everyone here has seen the Royal Societies at events that celebrate Hawaiian culture and history. They were here yesterday standing in respectful vigil as she lay in state at Yolani Palace, and they have been here since the princess came from the palace last night. Again, standing vigil over her casket, protecting her. These include the Royal Order of Kamehameha, the Ahui o Kahomanu, his daughters and sons of Hawaiian warriors, Mao Makakawa, assisted today by the Daughters of Hawaii and the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs. These groups and their members keep alive the traditions and protocols of old Hawaii in the days of our kingdom. The order that is associated with the House of Kwananakoa is Haleona Ali o Hawaii. Haleona Ali o Hawaii, Iku Nahalani, is Hailama Farden. Hailama is a cultural practitioner, an expert in traditional Hawaiian ceremonies, a name giver, a translator, and a judge of Hawaiian languages, chant, and music at hula competitions. And as the casket of the princess approached Iolani Palace yesterday, Hayalama did a kanikau, wailing it on to the palace grounds in traditional manner. Hayalama's eulogy, given at the request of the family, tells of the Kwananakoa legacy. Hayalama? Honorable Veronica Kavananakoa Nali'i Kie Kie, Prince David, Prince Quentin, Prince Piikoi, Prince Eric, Princess Esmeralda, His Majesty King Tuhetia. Honorable trustees and leaders of the Ali'i Trust and leaders of a noble Ali'i our Ali'i Ahahui and her members, most distinguished government officials, Ohana friends, Mekako Wapau Kavilina Oki Aloha. Aloha. As mentioned, I'm Hailama Farden, and I'm honored to have been asked to speak about our Ali'i as an Ali'i. I chose to entitle my my speech, my presentation, O Kealii Healii Ikamaka Ainana. I would note it, I would note that the princess kindly chose her three speakers who are all Kahu. So there might be a warning because Kahu have wonderful time sharing our aloha. O Kealii Healii Ikamaka Ainana, lest we forget. A classical Hawaiian tr proverb translated to say, A chief is a chief because of the makainana. Little context. I was fortunate to be raised by my grandparents, my paternal grandparents, and my grandmother, my tutu, taught me about the respect I should show and express to show tender aloha to our ali'i, specifically the ohana kavana nakoa. Now, my grandmother was born in 1916, and she shared many of the behaviors, or what would be my behaviors, as respect that her mother, who was born in the Hawaiian kingdom, expressed to her, and it was expected that she would extend. I guess what my tutu was teaching me were the ku'una, the mores of respect and reverence that her own mother taught her, and the expectation that I was to learn, to practice, and to honor. You see, she was teaching me, O kialii, hialii, kamakainana, and that if I honored the ku'una of my tutu, I would also honor the ku'una of her mother. My first meeting with the princess, Princess Abigail, was when I was 18. 
Although I had the buffer of the late dear Auntie Gladys Brandt, I was still a bit fearful, for she was a princess. Her eyes, peering through her glasses, asked me, From which Farden are you? I don't even remember answering her. And I must have, as she passed right on and moved on to the next person. A couple of years later, as a young officer in Haleonali'i o Hawaii, the princess attended many of our luau and festive occasions. And they were mostly held at the Japanese Culture Center. She also attended many of the special Mauna Ala events, especially those that honored her grandmother, who was her mother. I, get, I guess I got a little closer to her having to work with her in the beginning of 1999 when I became the Ikuhai or president of the Honolulu chapter of Haleonali'i o Hawaii, and more on in 2001 when I became the state president. The princess called often to ask how the Ahahui was doing. She asked if the Ahahui needed anything. She even visited a meeting once recently into when she brought and sponsored a member into our Ahahui, even signing the member's application. As for context, Princess Abigail Kinoiki Kekaulike Kavananako was born into our Ahahui. Her birth is recorded in the minutes of May 1926, our meeting. It was recorded and ordered by her own grandmother. Later, her mother, who served as our first Ikulani Ho'ano, or regent of the Haleonali Hawaii. Princess Abigail formally inherited the title of Ikuwohi as our third vice regent, a position that was held by her mother, Princess Lili Uokalani Kavana Nakoa. And she held that rank since 1969. The velvet ahu that adorns the, the casket depicts the rank of the Ikuwohi. In the spirit of the title of my presentation, I wanted to take some time to address her generosity and her genuine aloha for her people. Now, there have been beautiful testimonies from many ohana, even recently as on the news yesterday, today in conversations, telling of the princess's care for her people. Helping families in time of need and struggles. Sometimes maybe a single check. Sometimes ongoing care. Sometimes taking care of them for hospitalization. Or even for their funerals. I experienced some first-hand unmeasurable opuali'i from our beloved princess. She often would have Uncle Mahi Beamer call me. And he would say, Uncle Mahi would say, call when you can. She's waiting for your call. I knew that meant call now. <laughs> no matter where I was, what I was doing. When I called her, right to business. No pleasantries. Immediately concerned because she had heard someone was in need. And she asked me to find out what she could do for help to, in order to help them without letting them know who was offering the help. I must have received three or four of those calls, most of the times asking for no recognition at all from her. You know, the true spirit of generosity commands no fanfare. If the family, if the family was close to her, she might allow them to acknowledge her. But her love was genuine. Her love for people included her support for community efforts, like the Hawaiian, like the Olelo Hawaii in Hawaiian language, Ahapuna Naleo. And I know she would be so pleased that the Kiki of Puna Naleo O Manoa, her Kiki, came to sing her, sing for her this morning at ten o'clock. I tell you. Not all this as a boast of her generosity, for she would not have it in her lifetime. But really to capture the spirit of her duty, of loyalty to her role as Ali'i Hawai'i. She understood her role well, that was to care for her people. 
And besides any monetary concern, a generosity, the princes even established a foundation that would honor and celebrate the traditions and knowledge of our race. She has the most knowledgeable historians working, documenting Mele, Mo'olelo, and Ike. Her desire was to create a repository so the people of Hawaii would have a venue from which to learn. Today I short, shared a short glimpse of the princess's generosity. And how does that connect to the proverb, Well, here it is. The princess is my princess. And I know her love for her people. I know her loyalty of duty and traditions. I chose to speak on it as my tutu did to me, Share the, sharing this with all of you, and even spent time sharing it with my seven-year-old daughter because I want her to know and to remember forever. It seems like there even may be an opposite proverb which people may not speak of, but it may be out there. It goes something like this, O kahihia, kahihia ike kanaka. The sitting that we have the responsibility for even our entanglements, that some choose to speak of the attractiveness to sens sensationalism rather than more important story of aloha that must always be shared. Finally, to conclude a few points. Number one, today we honor a descendant of King Kaumuali, a descendant of Her Royal Highness, His Royal Highness, Prince David Kavananakoa, her grandfather who was buried on these grounds. His, his mother even, Her Royal Highness, Kekaulike, who rests in these hallowed grounds. A descendant of not just one, two, or three high chiefly lions of Hawaii, but she is tied to all high lineages of the Pai Aina. It is more than fitting that she will rest forever here with her kupuna. Number two, in her final months, still loyal to duty, she helped complete an ongoing task here at Mauna Allah. She secured new hala trees that replaced the former puhala that died many years ago. And the princess saw to it that the hala returned to Mauna Allah, perhaps even prophetically, that she would pass away just a few short months later. E princess kekaulike kawana na koe, kahau nani ame kahau lani o Hawaii nei, kavohi vivo ole kupaa ina palekapu. O kakae, pale kapu o kakae. Mahalo ya oe, eola, eola kainoa o Princess Abigail Kinuiki ke kaulike kawana. Aloha. 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 What an insightful and beautiful look into our princess's life. One of the key figures in that legacy is Abigail Waikahula Campbell Kawananakoa. She was the wife of Prince David Kawananakoa, the mother of the first president of the Iolani Palace, Lydia Liliuokalani Morris, who saved the palace from the wrecking ball, and the grandmother and adopted mother of Abigail Kawananakoa. She was a powerful force in Hawaii during the first half of the 20th century, passing away in 1945. This song was written for her and will be sung by Princess Abigail's favorite nightingale, the beautiful and gracious Nina Kealihi Bahamana.
When people talk about Princess Abigail, the first thing that often comes out is her support for many Hawaiian causes, such as the Yolani Palace, Mauna Ala, Ahapuna Leo, and Mary Monarch. No one ever spoke with greater eloquence about her good works than Kamaki Kanahila. A long-time community leader and community healer of the Wai'anae Coast, the legacy of Kamaki and his mother, Agnes Cope, can no better be seen than in the Dr. Agnes Kalanihokaha Cope Native Traditional Healing Center. Let's welcome Kamaki. Aloha Kaakov. Oh, let me catch my breath. I'm very, very honored to be asked to present this eulogy. Oh. History says of this very, very precious Ali'i Nui of Hawaii, Ke Kaulike, is that her heart was in the right place to not only preserve and take care of the health and well-being of her people. But she put her wealth, her mouth is. And two examples. On the slopes of Waianae, there's a hospital complex called the Waianae Coast Culture and Arts Society, Inc. Within that complex is a healing center, the only one of its kind in the world. Without Kekaulike, that would not exist. She put one million dollars down when one morning she came to visit my mother, and they were like sisters, called the house at 6.30 in the morning. Mom panicked because she thought it was one of her children that got sick. And all I heard was, Kamaki, Kekau, would you let Auntie Aggie know that I'm coming to Waianae to have breakfast with her? So she came. The two giggled in the corner, and then she came over to me and said, I hear there's a healing center area that's going to be built and named after your mother. I said, yes, where is it? So I walked her to the edge of a cliff. Today, the healing center, as I said, is the only one of its kind in the entire world. Visitors from all over the world come to look at it and to visit and to try and duplicate it. When Kekau visited, came back to see my mother and says, I'm going to make a contribution of $1 million to make sure and to guarantee that this is going to be built. On another occasion of her mana and her, of her aloha to us, she went, wanted to always preserve hula. And so she, with George Naope, Iolani Loahine, my mother, and I, and the wonderful lady who I miss, Dottie Thompson, sat together, and Kikau says, tell me about what you're going to be putting together. And so they described to her what was to happen in Hilo. She provided the financing so that Hula would never fade away, never fade away. And the matriarch sits here in the audience today, Luana Cavello, to protect carrying on the mother's genealogy. But Ohana, if it was not for Kekau, none of this would exist, ever. And for that, we will always be grateful. I will miss her very, very much. And I'm so happy that you're all here to honor this very, very precious Ali'i. Kia ora. Nice to see you all. Litany of names it brings brings to memory of 
how much uh, of an effect the purchase has had on all of us. And the names that should be mentioned, Mr. Eo, Mr. Aggie, um, they help color uh, the people who we are. So we're grateful. There's probably no greater source of joy in Princess Abigail's life than music. She loved music and she loved musicians. Her parties were always full of music, her house was always full of music, and when she was feeling down for any reason, her source of comfort was music. And there is no one who got more calls to sing a song than Nina Kalehi Bahamana. Nina is the daughter of Vicky E. Rodriguez and from birth was immersed in the songs and values of old Hawaii. And in the decades of their friendship, no one ever stood her sense of music more than Nina. For today's service, she was asked to pick two songs from her years with the princess, and she chose the songs that will follow. We bring up again Nina Kalehi Gift from Helen, son of Nina. She sang these songs on many occasions for the princess. Thank you. 
When the third eulogist, uh, eulogist, I'm sorry, eulogist was approached, he was told that this was probably the hardest of them in many ways. He was asked to talk about her not as a princess with a powerful lineage, not as a benefactor of Hawaiian causes, and instead as a person and a woman. Co Aaron Mahi of Makiki Community Church of Christ smiled when he heard the request and then laughed and said, That is not an easy one. And then he said that he would be honored to do that for her. Erin Mai was a longtime leader of the Royal Hawaiian Band, a renowned composer and conductor, and currently a cultural specialist for Partners in Development Foundation. Erin has asked that is in his place that his nephew present the words that he scripted for us to hear. His nephew, Kaakaio Ravencraft, if you could please join us. In the Lala Kumako, Hawaii Apau, Alhomai Kako, in the Limai Kaina Te Aura, Nukamahalo no Kiki and the Mai Kumako, Ekahano Ia no Kumako Ali, Nona Ohana, Nona Lala Ona, Nana, Nana Mea, Namea Ikako, and the Mai Nukako Hawaii Apau. Aloha mai. A ina lala o i viho o kahi no ko kako hawa i apau. Aloha mai kako. Ua piha wau. Me ka ha ha ha. Ki kune wau ma mua o ka a o ko. I ko kako ho ano ia no ke ali ia. Ah, o ho ho o ko ika o lelo hihia o vau hihia ke marawa yeah how we are get entangled with so many of the words that we have to share fairly as um, my brother Billy had shared with you all when Bobby um, called me I kind of took I was first stunned that I could come here and share with you my experience, my wonderful experience with Kili Kinwiki Kekaulike Kabana Nakoa. You know, she 
You heard the words, the wonderful Mo'oku Auhau, our brother Manu shares. And to hear the names of all those Ali, how I cannot help but share with you. And I'm going to twist one part of the of my brother um, Hailama on the Olelo Noeo. I will say, instead of saying, she is a chief. She is the chief. That is what I, 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 I came to my mind to share with you my experience with her. As you heard, many a time, Kikau would constantly ask questions of the Maka'inana, we who surrounded her, for advice. Especially when it came time for seeing to the needs of the people when these all took place. That very act alone showed to me a kind of tenderness, a kind of, uh, a, a, a kind of um, reality check of her people, all of which of whom you've heard and have experienced and have become beneficiaries of. And um, it was in this act of asking the question, how are my people? And she saw us to depend on us to be the eyes and ears of of what was going on in our community, what was going in, on in our, in, in our, amongst our people. And so on many occasions, um, many of you, of course, the stories which we tell are ones that, of course, are personal experience. There are many that I, I would like to share, but there's one in particular, and you've heard by Brother Kamaki and, and Brother Hailama about when she came to these points of, of, of helping, you know, our people, Kokua, Kalahui, Hawaii. We had just finished a project over at Bishop Museum of reestablishing the, um, the, the room which for the kahili of our ali'i. And she had put a, a sizable amount of money in that effort. And when it was all done, typical of our Hawaiian people, and as you, we've been experiencing the songs that have been lifted up in, in honor of our princess, and the traditions we have in our Hawaiian people. There was a, there was always a time for a little mea ai, a little kana, you know, ai mama, a little bit of hors d'oeuvre or something we eat. And then of course, she would always have her case of Don Perignon on the right hand side and she would enjoy that, that mea inu. And then of course we would enjoy the selections that we would choose, but then right away she would go into the business of asking us the question, where can I help? What can I do? Who needs the help? And as you have heard the testaments before mine, um, these names were lifted, projects were lifted, and, and she would listen to that. And by listening to that, then she would contemplate and then take action. This I'm most privileged to have witnessed that our Ali was truly K Ali, the chief for our people. Many of you know that she's strict in business and gets to the point right away, as you heard earlier in the testament. Call you 6.30 in the morning, I'm coming down having breakfast. You know, something like that. Or I want to meet you and I want to 
talk to you about this project, you know. Tell me about it. But there was also a fun side of, of Kili. I remember once when they were being honored at the Historical Society, and she was there. And she asked Mahi to go to the piano and play. Don't go changing to try to please me. And Mahi never sang that song before, but he started playing the piano, and Kekau got up and she danced. This is my interpretation of hula. You know, she's, you know, she can be, you know, forceful and strict and, 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 and to business. But when she wants to have fun, we all were witnesses of that and seeing her just enjoy herself. She wasn't trained in hula necessarily, but she danced that on the, on the stage at the Marnock Room at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. And I never forget that looking at her and saying, oh, he's, he's a Kelly that wants to have fun. And we all know how we like to have fun as Hawaiians, especially after we have a good, you know, some poi and kalua pig and whatever, poke, and, and then to enjoy, enjoy in inu and then, and then just enjoy ourselves. These are the traits of, of this wonderful Ali of ours who was a human being, who was sensitive, who loved and understood her place. You know, the, when she did that project over there at Bishop Museum and the Kahili Room, it was, you know, the Hawaiians, they used this term, kulana keli. Kulana is the, the state, the position that you hold and the responsibility that you hold. And as Ali'i, that's why you have the kahili. The kahili, of course, gives you that sense of placement, your, your placement, your, your, your title, and your station. But the action is the most important part. And this is where we have all witnessed this, especially myself and um, for this I am most thankful. And so that's why I responded in the affirmative to be here amongst you all in honoring Heli Keali Nuka Maka Ainana Nuku Kako Hava Iapau. Mahalo nui nuku oko holohi anamai, nuku wiki anamai, kawaano ia, iku mako ali. Mahalo nui. Mahalo, Aaron. Thank you for being here. The closing prayer will be offered by Kahuneri Tiffany of Lani Kuhunua. Princess Abigail is a Campbell and was always proud of the lineage of James Campbell and his wife, Chief Maipinipine. And like other Campbell mem family members, always found great peace. The refuge at Lani Kuhunua. 
If Kahu could join us now. Before we close today, I want to say a word about the two capes that grace the altar. As Hai Lama explained, a stunning velvet cape speaks to her rank in Haleonali, Hawaii. The capes are, and the capes are named Kekaliki Wahine was created following her passing by feather artist Rick San Nicholas to honor her and to accompany her on her final journey as it will be laid on her casket in her tomb. Her tomb, the foundation of which you probably saw as you entered in the Eva Makai corner of Mauna Ala, the already built foundation is covered in black and construction will begin later this week. Her burial will take place at a later date and will be in private. In designing today's service, the primary source was the April 1945 funeral service to her grandmother and adopted mother, Abigail Campbell Kwanakua. That service was brought to a close as we will close this one today with the singing of Hawaii Pono'i and Aloha Oi. We will be led by Nina and Lehulu and we invite you to stand and sing. The words, should you need them, are on the back of your program. Nina.
This brings our service to a close. The family will remain on grounds for a while in case you want to say a few words to them. The area where her tomb will be is marked by the tarp over the construction area and the flowers surrounding it on the grass, largely from yesterday's lying in state at the Diolani Palace. As you leave the grounds, we will present you with a memento of the occasion, this occasion, and a meal to give you sustenance on your way. Mahalo nui, mahalo nui loa, mahalo nui apaloa, mahalo piha to all of you for coming and helping us to celebrate the life of Princess Abigail Kinwiki Kekalike Kona Nakoa. Hello, everyone.